Welcome back to Gotham Tonight. I'm Mike Mingo. Up next, a look at the new owner of Arkham Asylum. A familiar face that might come as a surprise. But first, a special report by Summer Gleason on the recent cap from the terrorist known as the Joker. In a night that had Gotham City locking its doors and barricading its windows, citizens can finally breathe a sigh of relief. For the moment. The apprehension of the Joker, or as the staff at Arkham Asylum has labeled him, patient 4479, was due to the valiant efforts of the Gotham City Police Department. What else is there to say? All right, the freak busted out, and the boys got in there, took him down. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get drunk. But in a city riddled with police corruption, it's difficult to find reassurance. Commissioner James Gordon was unavailable for an interview, but said the Gotham City Police Department is doing everything they can to make sure this never happens again. But where did it all begin? And what events led up to what some are calling the Wedding Day Massacre that left eight dead and countless injured? The story begins with the first capture of the Joker after the death of District Attorney Harvey Dent at the hands of the vigilante known as the Batman. After a messy legal dispute over whether or not the Joker would be placed in the care of Arkham Asylum Hospital or imprisoned at Blackgate Penitentiary, it was decided that an evaluation period would take place and the Joker was placed in the care of Dr. Jeremiah Arkham, head and former owner of Arkham Asylum. Heading up the evaluation was Dr. Harleen Quinzel, a choice that proved to be highly controversial. Were you at all concerned that an unhealthy obsession would occur dealing with a patient like this? I, I wasn't obsessed. That's not what I'm asking. How could I have known that any of this would have ever happened? I was and I still am completely confident in my abilities as a psychiatrist. You've been accused of being a glory hound and inexperienced. In the light of what's happened to you, has it all been worth it? <clears throat> if you're asking me if the sacrifices that I've had to make and the pain that I've endured and the life that I've had to give up so that somebody else doesn't have to lose someone that they love is worth it? Yeah, yes, it's worth it. But others aren't quite so sure. Former lead psychiatrist Dr. Jonathan Crane, who was incarcerated himself at Arkham after his involvement in the terrorist attack on the Narrows a year ago, had this to say. Dr. Quinzel and I never did see eye to eye, and she wasn't ready for that sort of treatment. I don't say this about very many people, but patient 4479 scares me. Crane is currently in the process of an early release, made possible by his former colleague, Dr. Jeremiah Arkham. Dr. Arkham, a survivor of the incident, was unavailable for comment. Well, the main problem with Arkham Asylum is their uh, revolving door policy. Not only is their security lax, but they, uh, they put far too much trust in their ability to cure patients. I mean, look at the statistics. Uh, their, uh, their success rate has been steadily declining and uh, most of their patients are repeat customers. The conditions at Arkham were intolerable. I was literally losing my hair working there. The handling of patient 4479 was a complete disaster. <clears throat> I lost my position due to in aggravated assault charge. I am currently going through a divorce and I had to move after my address was posted on the internet. And I'm still receiving hate mail. Well, after destroying Gotham General where I was finishing up my residency, uh, crashing a colleague's wedding and murdering a close friend of mine, no. I'm not a fan of the clown. I have opened my own private practice. I have discovered that the source of all patient 4479's problems is the Batman. I am dedicating all my research to understanding who the Batman is. I 
you understand who the Batman is, there, you'll understand patient 4479. Dr. Strange says he is happy to no longer have to deal with Arkham, whereas Dr. Elliot hopes that under new management, they can work towards solving these problems. Well, I believe it's finally in good hands, and that patients are finally going to get the, the help that they need. It, it brings to mind the work of Thomas Wayne and everything he did for, for Gotham. I understand you were recently called in to perform Bruce Wayne's surgery. Uh, I'd like to keep my involvement with the Wayne family hush-hush. But Arkham Asylum has a long history of unethical mishaps. Shortly after the Joker was brought in, leaked videotapes began to appear online. The man responsible was another patient, Mac Rodello, nicknamed the Bookworm, because of his work privileges at the asylum's library that allowed him access to the hospital's equipment. Rodello was killed during the breakout. After the Joker's capture, more leaked videos followed. The source remains unknown, but is rumored to come from inside the Gotham City Police Department. What? Leaked videos? No. No, I'm dedicated to this police force, all right? I do my work, and I do it well, okay? Now, Unfortunately, no one was available for comment. No more questions. So how does one prevent this kind of thing from happening in the future? A former employee at Arkham, claiming to have been taken hostage by the Joker, has his own theory. For security reasons, he has been asked to be known as Lockup. Patient 4479 ruined my life. He came into my home in the middle of the night and beat me with a baseball bat, leaving me unconscious. Then he threw me down a flight of stairs. That part I don't remember, but I saw it on video. Then another man removed my clothes, and when I came to, they forced me to film these horrendous acts of violence, naked. After which, he put me in a dress and locked me in the sewers, where I was brutally attacked by some kind of creature. After being rescued by the Batman, the police surrounded me. They didn't believe any of my story and accused me of being intoxicated. Currently, I'm under investigation because apparently my illegal weapons collection was used in the attacks. And because I couldn't keep this from happening in the first place, the asylum fired me. They are asking for trouble. Therapy doesn't work. They need to be locked away forever. If I don't get to lock up these freaks, I don't know who will. Most victims of the Joker's attacks would agree. But for Dr. Quinzel, the individual who has suffered the most at the hands of 4479, it's surprising to find her still devoted to her duties. Um, well, my work really is all I have left to hold on to. You know, quitting or leaving, for that matter, would just be letting him win. So, no, we're gonna we're gonna finish what we started. Um, I know I can help him. But is there any way to help or possibly cure a patient like four four seven nine, or is keeping him under lock and key the only treatment for Arkham Asylum? And will its new owner be a help or a hindrance? Only time will tell. For Gotham City News. I'm Summer Gleason. Thanks, Summer. Tune in tomorrow night for a special. Is a crocodile man living in the sewers of Gotham? One former security guard says they do. When we come back, an update on Bruce Wayne's condition after a recent hunting accident at the Wayne Estate. Stay with us.